Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. There is a misconception that school counselors are just for the kids. Uh, what parents don't know is that their child's school counselor can actually help them with issues related to parenting, behavior, and school successes. So what kind of training does a school counselor receive? Dr. Christine Schimmel is an assistant professor in the Department of Counseling, Rehabilitation, Counseling, and Counseling Psychology at West Virginia University. She's the co-author of several books, including Impact Therapy, The Courage to Counsel, a book that teaches counselors how to use a multi-sensory experiential approach to working with clients. Dr. Schimmel is a former school counselor at all development levels and has been training school counselors for over 15 years. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. We're excited to have you here. Yes. Now, it, it's, it's great to see that there's some sort of a shift going on with school counselors in schools, and maybe it's just perception, but something is, is happening there. And we, I think what I loved about your topic and your expertise is I think we need to to bring parents up to speed about what's going on. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm glad, I like the word you use, Bill, is a shift. A very significant shift is occurring in, in the role that school counselors play in our schools and, what, and the services they provide to our students. School counseling really came of age in the, in the late 1960s, early 1960s as a result of Sputnik. Um, the Russians launched a spaceship into space, and our government decided all of a sudden that we needed somebody in the school to encourage students to pursue careers in math and science. And unfortunately, that perception has stuck with us for the last 30, 40 years over what is it that a school counselor really does. And there's the perception that the school counselor is there to help my child with their schedule only or to help them choose a career path. And that's part of what a school counselor does. But a school counselor really is working over a lot of different domains in the school, the personal social aspect of a child, the academic as aspect, and the career aspect. And so when parents are struggling at home with behavior issues, when they're struggling with academic issues, how do I get my child to do their homework, those kinds of issues, the school counselor is really a good resource for any parent to access. And a lot of them have the educational background to be able to do that, too, because in most states, uh, they have master's degrees, mm -hmm. some in psychology, some in education, and there are even states that allow those just with bachelor's degrees to also be uh, school counselors, mm -hmm. and they, too, uh, have specialty areas. But um, that's interesting that you mentioned that, that that's where it all came about, because it makes sense now. I remember when I was in, in school, it, I didn't think I needed a school counselor until I got in high school, and it was to determine... And am I going to college or am I going in the service? Right. And if I go to college, what am I going to study? Right. And I remember seeing the school counselor in the halls, and he would say, have you thought about where you're going? Uh -huh. so, we thought, so now people like me are parents and thinking, okay, well, we don't need the school counselor until you get until into high, high school. school. Right. But that's wrong. That is wrong. And I think in one of your earlier segments, the topic of bullying and, have, and children dealing with bullying came up in an earlier segment of your show. And the school counselor is a great resource to connect with if your child is struggling with a, a social issue such as bullying or a friendship issue. We have elementary school counselors, we have middle school counselors, and they're absolutely trained to help advocate and provide leadership to students who are struggling with personal social issues. Those personal social issues affect the school, the child's performance in school. And we all want the child to succeed in school but we want the child to succeed in life. So a school counselor is an excellent resource. And like you said, they have the training to do that. Our students at West Virginia University take almost exactly the same track of courses that the community mental health students take. They're the clinical mental health students. Take. Really? So they're trained in dealing with crisis, dealing with grief, dealing with trauma. They're, the modern day professional school counselor has a wide range of training that al allows them to help children who are struggling with all different kinds of issues. Now, I, ha I still have a teenager in high school, mm -hmm. and we ran into a problem, and I, my first thought as a parent was, I, I think I should talk to the vice principal because there's a lot of vice principals, but I thought, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure I'm going to, I'm really going to get what I'm looking for because we got to talk, kind of, we got to go deeper with the issue that's going on in the school. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about, wait a minute, the school counselor is there. So I actually personally started by getting uh, on her calendar to talk about it and then realized that that this, and then there were several school counselors at this large school, so they're an incredible resource for all kinds of problems, mm -hmm. behavior problems, emotional issues, all kinds of things. And that's why I want to do this segment, because this is great. This is going to educate parents that 
that you do have help. There is someone you can at least start with, right? Exactly. And it's not just for the child who finds themselves in a disciplinary issue. <clears throat> the school counselor isn't just for a student who gets in trouble at school. I think there's that perception, too. Well, the school counselor doesn't have any interest in helping my child if they're not in trouble. Well, it, it, in terms of a disciplinary action. But if they're in trouble and they're struggling in math, and there seems to be some underlying reason why that may be, maybe the school counselor who's in that building every day would have some insight into that that can really be helpful to parents. And we, we shared earlier that I told you that uh, I always encourage parents that if you're experiencing a problem with your child in school, whether it's disciplinary or uh, academic or something, that parents have uh, play a very important role. Their job isn't to fix it. They don't have the capacity. Mm -hmm. Their job is to become the project manager and pull right. together the team. And one of those individuals on the team should be the, should school, be the school counselor. The school counselor. Ab absolutely. And I think we have to encourage parents to know that. And, and again, here in West Virginia, we're very fortunate because we do have many schools who have a singular one, at least one counselor, even at the elementary level. We still have a, a situation, some situations in our state where elementary schools are sharing a counselor. But for the most part, we're very fortunate. And, and there is a drive. Um, Mrs. Obama, the First Lady, now has a, an initiative called Reach Higher. And that Reach Higher initiative will encourage even more school counselors to be placed throughout elementary, middle, and high schools. So the school counselor is absolutely a person, a, a good resource for parents to go to if their child is struggling with anything. I sit on the board of the net, an organization called the Network Against Domestic Abuse, and that that social initiative is is, is personal to me, and and so I donate a lot of my time and money uh, for the organization. I think it's great. The next thing I want to do is I want to bring it to school counselors because mm -hmm. of the whole teen dating violence. It's mm -hmm. the it's the whole um, try. Well, and and, and we're, what we want to do is create education on positive relationships. What does positive relationships look like? Because while uh, domestic abuse, people automatically think of you know spouses in the home. It doesn't. It extends yeah. even to the school system. So I, I would imagine that school counselors need to be in, uh, knowledgeable on that kind of thing because they may see it all the time. I cannot tell you how many times I've sat in my office as a high school counselor, more so high school, some middle school, but as a high school counselor and had a young lady or even a young man in my office crying because of a a traumatic breakup or there was a big fight, they got in a fight at the football game or, you know, those kinds of things occur in high school. I mean, high school is a microcosm of, of what we're seeing in our larger community. So even, you know, as long as 10, 12 years ago when I was a high school counselor, I saw a lot of students who were struggling with dating issues and breakup issues and relationship issues. And your school counselor is the person who's on the front line of that. Um, a, a student might be afraid or reluctant to go home and share with mom and dad or their grandmother or grandfather what they're dealing with in terms of their, their partner relationships, mm -hmm. but they'll share with the school counselor. And that's good because, especially when you get in the high school years, adolescent years, the relationships are very important, and that can make or break the child's or teenager's success mm -hmm. with their academics. Oh, absolutely. You know, I know you're familiar um, as a clinical psychologist with the idea of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and school counselors are trained in that. And, and what we mm. want kids to do is to self-actualize, to learn, right, to sit in the classroom and absorb history and math and science and reading and all that teachers have to offer. But the problem is if the basic needs are unmet, if they don't feel loved, if they don't feel safe and secure, they're probably not going to be able to sit there and learn pre-calculus. And so using all of those resources at the school that are, available, uh, that are available to parents, such as the school counselor, to help make sure that students have all those basic needs met. I heard a, a mom in her, in, in her teenager the other day, and the, the teenager was saying that she broke up with her boyfriend, and the mother's response was, oh, it'll blow over, don't worry about it. And the, little, the girl's voice was, the, her face was like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. It doesn't just blow over, so it's very critical. One of the first things I teach my students in my counseling children's class is that too often we as adults assume it's big people, big problems, little people, little problems. <laughs> it's not. For those little people, something like a breakup is a big problem. When you're in third grade, feeling like all of your friends are mad at you is a huge problem. So having someone at school who understands that and can utilize some special skills to help a child work through that issue, it's key in getting them to be academically successful. 
Go ahead. Well, one of the things that we've done at West Virginia University, a colleague of mine, and you mentioned one of our books, Impact Therapy, The Courage to Counsel. Mm -hmm. We travel all over the country training school counselors how to counsel students in brief periods of time because our school counselors mm -hmm. don't have a lot of time. Yeah. But when that third grader comes in and is struggling with a friendship issue and the school counselor only has seven to ten minutes to devote to them, we want them to have the skills and the training be able to do something productive and take that issue to a, a place of resolution in that seven to ten minutes. That's like microwave counseling. Exactly. Is necessary. <laughs> right. When you're one counselor and have 550 students, you have to be able to address the issue rather quickly and provide some real relief to a student. That's, that's really important. So uh, we hope that parents uh, and educators watching the show and we'll see this segment and say, you know, it's, it, it, it's okay to contact the school counselor to bring them into a problem. And if, and if they can't even help, they can at least direct you to, to a resource where they can get the help. And make right? a referral, absolutely. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for Good luck with me. your studies. Uh, good luck with your book. Thank you. Uh, in this clip, we've, show, we'll, we've shown a cover of the book, so we we'll hope Great. to get some press for the book. Thanks, Bill. On today's show, we learned about the many resources available to, to parents and children in Harrison County Schools in Clarksburg, West Virginia. We learned about the We Take a Stand anti-bullying program that turns bystanders into heroes, and we learned about the resource center that creates a high level of parent involvement in education. We also learned about the Medbrook Children's Charity and how it's helping underprivileged children and the incredibly valuable uh, resources that it provides to your child school counselor. I hope you'll tune in to future episodes as I offer more tools to help you rebuild your parenting toolbox as an awesome parent or teacher. If you're watching this on DVD or online and you'd like to get it in your local public access channel, contact my office to find out how. Making the world a better place to live begins at home as engaged, encouraged, and masterful parents. I'm Bill Corbett. I'll see you the next time on Creating Cooperative Kids. I'll go to sleep with the lights off tonight Even though I'm scared of the dark I can lick that thing under my bed with one hand I know I can In my heart I'm gonna be big I'm gonna reach real high